Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at another automotive sensor. Now, this is called a MAP sensor, M-A-P, stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. So here's the inlet to the sensor. So this fits into a hole in your intake manifold on your car's engine, and it's sealed with this O-ring, so it slips into the hole, and it's held down by this hole here with a nut and bolt, and this is where the electrical connector plugs in. And there's three terminals. The one on the very right is plus 5 volts, the one in the middle is ground, the one on the left is the analog output. Now some are digital, some have a square wave output that measures the frequency or the PWM, but in this case this is a very simple one. We're getting 0 to 5 volts on the analog output. So this measures the vacuum that's in your intake manifold. So your car is a 4 cycle engine and on the intake stroke when the piston is coming down it's pulling in air and fuel mixture into the combustion chamber. It's causing a suction. Now that suction causes a vacuum in the intake manifold and that's what this measures. Now it's called a MAP sensor, MAP, Manifold Absolute Pressure. So why is it called a pressure sensor? Well pressure and vacuum are inverse actions and high vacuum equals low pressure and low vacuum equals high pressure and we're going to look into that next. Okay the MAP sensor is measuring pressure and the pressure they're talking about is atmospheric pressure. So if you look at my bench I have one inch squares laid out on my bench and if I bring in a piece of paper that has a surface area of one square inch like this there's 14.7 pounds per square inch of air pressure pressing down on this piece of paper or 30 inches of mercury that's our atmospheric pressure. Now if we take that pressure and we trap it into an enclosure that's sealed and we apply a vacuum we could actually drop that atmospheric pressure. So that's what's happening inside a intake manifold. So when we apply vacuum, which you could think of as negative pressure, the more vacuum we, we apply to the intake manifold, the lower the atmospheric pressure will drop. Okay, I have a vacuum pump and gauge on my bench and it's open to the atmosphere. So the needle is pinned all the way over to the right. That's one atmosphere, that's 14.7 pounds per square inch. And as I apply vacuum, it's going to move all the way down to here, which is minus 30 inches of mercury, which would be pure vacuum. Now we could think of this uh, vacuum pump as, a, as an engine. So this will be the piston. There's actually a piston in here and I can move it with this handle. This is the intake manifold, which is connected to the gauge. And this is our input. This is our air inlet, which will be a throttle body, which is variable. Okay, this is the throttle body. And this is where the air enters. And it comes out the bottom into the intake manifold. So when we first start our car, it's going to be closed and it'll be idle. Now as we're driving along, we come up to a steep hill, we give it some more gas, we go wide open throttle, it's going to open up like this. Now we're going to have maximum airflow into the intake manifold. Okay, I got my vacuum pump engaged and it's open to the atmosphere. So I'm going to put my finger over the opening and trap one atmosphere inside so I will simulate the intake manifold. Now when I start my car, the piston's going to come down, it's going to create a vacuum. So there's my vacuum, so I dropped the pressure from 14.7 about halfway, so that's about 7 pounds. If I keep on going, that'll be around idle. Idle or for, or for cruising down the highway under no load. Now if we come to a steep hill, we give it wide open throttle. So now I'm going to release my finger, and you can see the vacuum is going to drop. So now the, it's going to sense that, and it's going, to, it's going to retard the timing so we don't get knocking and pinging, and it's going to apply more gas to the fuel delivery. Okay, back in the carbureted days, we didn't have MAP sensors. We used this device here. This is a vacuum advance. So this would be connected up to your intake manifold to measure vacuum, and there'd be a diaphragm in here. So in high vacuum, we'd pull the diaphragm, pull on this rod, and it would advance the timing in the distributor. Now when the car was under load, the vacuum would drop, and it would retard the timing to stop knocking and pinging. Now as the speed of the engine increases we need to advance the timing and that's what this does. It's a mechanical advance so the faster this spins around the more these weights would fling out with centrifugal force like this and that would, that would advance the timing. Okay I got my MAP sensor powered up with 5 volts and it's open to the atmosphere so it's reading 4.22 volts so this is the voltage it will get when the car is not running. And as soon as you start the car, it's going to apply vacuum. And it's going to change the voltage. So I'll give it some vacuum. And you can see it's, it's responding to the vacuum. And it's pretty responsive. This is a good way to test a MAP sensor if you have a bad MAP sensor. 
So around here, that would be that would be around idle, about 1.5 volts. And then as we uh, open up our throttle, we uh, we're under load. Then it's going to drop. We're opening up the throttle body to the atmosphere, so the vacuum is going to drop, and that's going to be a wide open throttle, and it's going to go back down to 4.22 volts. Okay, I got my map sensor hooked up to my microcontroller, so if you want to embed this into your uh, project, just hook up the map sensor to, to the ADC of your favorite microcontroller, and as we apply vacuum, watch the LEDs on the scamp board, they go up. So you could actually calibrate it, the vacuum, how many inches of mercury, to how many LEDs. And if I release the vacuum, it shall come down. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on this map sensor. So if you get a check engine light on your car and it's running rough, and you get a trouble code of P0069 or P0106, it's probably going to be your map sensor. And they're easy to change out. Just take off one bolt, it just pulls out. And uh, they're easy to install. You could actually test it on the bench. You could test your old one with a vacuum pump and gauge, like I showed you in a voltmeter. Or you can embed it into a project. If you need to uh, measure any type of vacuum, you could pick up one of these. They're, they're very inexpensive and robust.